Okay, for section 5.4, this is on indefinite integrals and the net change theorem. So we already saw with the fundamental theorem of calculus that when you integrate a function dx, you get another function. And that means that the derivative of capital F is that function inside. And so now notice there are no limits of integration. This is called an indefinite integral as opposed to the ones with the limits on the top and bottom. Those are called definite integrals. So an indefinite integral gives you a function, whereas a definite integral gives you a number. Okay, so for example, if you integrate x squared dx, remember you add one to the power, divide by the new power, and you get what's called a constant of integration. And that's because the derivative of that function gives you back that function inside the integrand. Okay, and this is true for any constant there, right? The derivative of seven is zero, derivative of a million is zero. So any constant, so we just say plus a constant c. Okay, so here's another example to integrate or find the integral of the eighth root of x to the ninth. So we can write that using a rational exponent. You add one and divide by the new power. Add one with the same denominator. So you get 17 eighths. And when you divide by a fraction, you invert and multiply, plus a constant. Okay, and here again, this is a polynomial function. So you add one, divide by the new power, add one, divide by the new power, et cetera, and then plus a constant. Simplify. Right here, you can go ahead and FOIL that out first, and then add one, divide by the new power, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and here's one. Uh, where we can um, go ahead and multiply out the secant and distribute that to both functions inside the parentheses. So you get eight secant squared t plus three secant t tan t. And then when you integrate, the integral of secant squared is tan. And remember the constants can get pulled out you could think of integrating each one of these two functions separately, but you don't really have to write that step. You just know you're doing one at a time and then plus. And um, the integral of secant tan is secant because the derivative of secant is secant tan. Derivative of tan is secant squared, right? Plus the constant of integration. Now this one, remember, is a definite integral so when you integrate 4e to the x, you just get 4e to the x. Derivative of sine is minus cosine, and then you still have the constant. And you're going to evaluate that at those limits. So plug in the pi first for x, and then minus plug in the 0 in both of those terms. Okay, so cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is positive 1. And you end up with this. So here's the net change theorem. And this says that the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx is capital F at b minus capital F of a. So basically, the integral of the rate of change gives you that net change. Okay, so when the integrand is a velocity function, you end up with displacement. And inside now, if you have the absolute value of that velocity function, you end up with the distance traveled. Now remember the absolute value, it's the positive when that's greater than or equal to zero, or the opposite, when what's inside is less than zero. Okay, so here's an example. 
the given data is for a particle moving along a line. Acceleration as a function of time is 2t plus 4. And then we have an initial condition where we know the initial velocity, or the velocity at time equals 0, is negative 32. And we're only interested in the first 6 seconds. I'm assuming it's seconds. Uh, so A, find the displacement, and B, find the distance traveled. Okay, so we know that both of these involve taking the integral of the velocity function, and notice what the limits are from t1 to t2. So first we need to get the velocity function. So there's the acceleration function. We integrate that. We get t squared plus 4t plus a constant, but using this initial condition, uh, v at zero gives you negative 32. So when you put zero in for t, you get negative 32. And so in this case, the constant of integration is negative 32. So here now is that velocity function. And so to find the displacement, that's just the integral, and we're interested from zero to six. So we can go ahead and integrate that, and you get negative 48. I must have gotten this problem from WebAssign, um, and it's in meters. <laughs> and then to get the actual distance traveled, that's the absolute value. And so we're gonna take the absolute value of that velocity function and, you know, remember where uh, the function is positive, right? You're integrating, and so that's going to be positive. And where it's less than zero, it's negative. So we want to split up that integral into two pieces. Um, this particular one is actually kind of easy because that's a parabola, the t squared plus 4t minus 32. So we can find the roots, we get that parabola, and we're only interested in that interval from zero to six. So again, the velocity is negative from zero to four because it's below the x-axis, and the velocity is positive from four to six because it's above the x-axis. Okay, so if we wanna know the total distance traveled, you know, from zero to four since it's negative, you'd have to take the opposite to actually get a positive value. And then for the next uh, section or sub-interval, you're good with a positive. So you can split that up into two different integrals and then add the distances to get that total. Um, if it weren't such a nice, easy function like that, where you could just do a little sketch and reason it through, you know, you might remember um, doing these kinds of test points, right? So <laughs> you get the zeros, and then that divides the number line into three different sections, A, B, and C. And then you can test values. When you put negative 9 in there, you get a negative times a negative. That's a positive. And so that whole region is positive. Test a value in region B, like 0. That's between there, that's easy to do. And you get a negative, test a value in region C, and you get a positive. So that's another way that you can do 